Christopher O'Hara, and I'm CEO of First Call MD. First Call MD is in the center of the telemedicine industry. Telemedicine's been around for about three decades, but for a lot of limitations, uh, the use has been restricted predominantly to closed loop systems like prison facilities, offshore oil platforms, and most recently, the airplanes and yachts of billionaires. But for a lot of reasons, that is changing. The key drivers of telemedicine is really there's a shortage of primary care physicians. Uh, there's a growing population. The population's getting older. Typically, as you get older, you require more medical attention. Uh, with Obamacare and the medical reforms, there's going to be 50 million new, uh, previously uninsured individuals becoming insured and getting into the medical system. Technology is a key driver because there's now sophisticated video teleconferencing. We've got broadband everywhere. We have spiraling health care, uh, health care costs. Uh, so the insurance companies are in favor of doing things to bring that down. And the technology itself as it relates to the medical equipment, there's a lot of peripherals now that are USB based that you can plug into a computer system and use that video connection to tie back to, uh, to doctors not just in the same city, but around the world. Where First Call is, is we're a platform provider. We sit in the middle, and we've created a network of medical professionals, everything from a nurse to a nurse practitioner to a uh, primary care physician, uh, a hospitalist, and specialists. And our job is to take those doctors and actually let them make house calls but not just to a house, to a retail setting, like a pharmacy or a shopping mall. Uh, we bring it to the workplace in a, in a, a clinical type setting. And also we can uh, bring them directly into the home as long as we follow certain regulations. And of course, since it's medical, every, every uh, state does have different regulations that you have to follow. We have a, a uh, turnkey solution where we can put into a location-based system that has sophisticated medical equipment in it. It's got the video conference technology. It provides an element of confidentiality and privacy, and it get, creates a one-on-one -on -one connection with the patient and the doctor. And now we're going to show you a, a uh, video on a real-time application for a home-based monitoring system. Program is not the data or the equipment or the technology that's being used, but the ability to have someone on the other end of that data that can interpret and act on the results. So right now I'm looking at some information that was sent to me by my patient Lois. I'm seeing a trend of a lot of elevated blood pressures, weights, and pulse. But Lois has heart failure, and so this one view of the data would suggest to me that something's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Algorithm Build Center. The Algorithm Build Center is really an opportunity for me as her nurse to identify a series of additional questions that I want to ask her. Lois has heart failure along with some other conditions like high blood pressure. And I've got the algorithm built for her. You see this algorithm name, Lois Patient here. I'm going to select another module. I'm going to bring in some depression questions because I do think it's worth a few days anyway of some assessments. By just selecting on the various questions and data collection points that I want to offer her, I'm going to ask her some questions about depression. But literally, with a few clicks of the mouse and in about 60 seconds, I built a patient-specific care plan for Lois. Lois, hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Lois, I'm going to flip the video now so that you'll be able to see me. And I can see you. Uh, because your blood pressure was up and you were a little bit short of breath today, I want to have you do a uh, stethoscope check for me. So go ahead and reach the head of the stethoscope up and put it into position number one. Perfect. Go up about an inch. I'm going to start the stethoscope so I'll be able to hear your heart sounds here. Take a couple of deep breaths. 
Okay, good. Now I'll put it in number two. A little higher, there you go. Okay, good. Deep breath. Okay, okay. Now number three. Up about two inches. Very good. Okay. And number four. It's just saying like the generation after them will love it. But... All right. Now go off to the side in the back. Deep breath. Okay. And then to the other side, please. Okay. We can go ahead and put the stethoscope away. Lois, I'm hearing some crackling in your lungs today, which tells me there's a little bit of extra fluid. So uh, it's a good idea for you to, right after the call, I want you to go ahead and take your Lasix medication and your other medications. And then today at 2 o'clock, I'd like you to redo all of your vital signs. Is that something you can do today? Yes, I can. Okay. Another thing I want to check on, though, as long as we had you on the phone today, is you mentioned that your wrist was swollen. Can you hold up your wrist for me, please? That's good. And that sounds like you're coughing. That coughing will go away when you get rid of some of that fluid in your lungs. So Lois, what I'm seeing here on the screen with the picture that I've taken, this does not look like it's swelling that is associated with your heart failure. It looks actually like swelling that's with your arthritis. Do you feel that might be your arthritis acting up a little bit? Yes, I think it is. Yeah, okay. All right, well, I'm gonna send off that picture to Dr. Smith, but right after we're off the call, I want you to go ahead and take your medications and take your vital signs again and do your session at two o'clock. And then if you don't hear from me, what will happen is I'll take a look at everything. If everything looks good, I'm not gonna call you. If I'm worried at all or I think we need to do something else, I will call you and we'll take the next step, okay? Okay, thank you very much. Well, let's hope that you have a great weekend without any further interruptions from me. How about that? Well, that sounds great. Thank you. Again, that's a home monitoring application that we wanted to demonstrate. Um, we have current discussions going on with two large pharmacies about putting in uh, our, our clinics. We're also in discussions uh, with a large dialysis provider to do exactly what you saw, which is the home monitoring solution. So we're pretty far along and we have a lot of positive uh, things taking place. And the one thing I want to point out is that the American Wellness Committee uh, in their study for uh, for the president determined that 70% of the 500 million primary care visits could have been handled effectively with telemedicine. So that's 350 million visits last year that could have been handled through the telemedicine piece. Thank you. I'll, I'll start. So I'm just, I'd like to learn what state is the pro is the product in? Is this a, a, a prototype, or are you actually shipping? It's it is in, it is a uh, it's we did a beta in Texas. Okay. Texas recently changed the rules um, regarding telemedicine. In that our beta in Texas was to go directly to the consumer, and uh, we did that in the summer and had a very good response. And uh, in in November. Uh, they basically, in Texas, they said, you cannot go directly to the consumer unless you're in a qualified medical scenario like the pharmacy. So in Texas, our plan was always to work with the pharmacies, but we wanted to test the software and the, and, and, uh, and the connectivity to the doctors, et cetera. So we have that, we're ready, to win, and, uh, and it's in place. I was gonna say, how much would you say is technical versus regulatory in your, in your obstacle path? Well, the regulatory piece is very important because each state has its own requirements that you have to fulfill. Um, the good news is that uh, the real differentiator is if you call your doctor up, chances are that is not going to be covered by the insurance companies. But the insurance companies, particularly United Healthcare, um, now has telemedicine reimbursement codes, and the differential is the video combined with the teleconference has to be audio plus the video as opposed to just an email or a telephone call. What's your pricing model look like? Um, the target price is to be in the 55 to $60 range. And out of that, you have the 
you have the uh, site that was reimbursed, the doctors that's, that's reimbursed, and then we have our, our percentage of that. Is that, and is that per call, per month, per week? What's no, that's per, that's per visit. Per visit. So, to, per visit. So there's a way, there's different marketing strategies where you can create a membership-based program where you charge a nominal amount per year and then an office visit. Uh, or you can go with just the straight one to use it, you pay for it, you pay as you go model. So we have, uh, you know, our system will support both of that, both of those, both of those models. And, and what is your system? Is it a specialized camera and a monitor device? I mean, why not use what's already embedded in the laptop? Well, we do use, uh, we don't manufacture the device, so we buy the best of the best, we integrate it into, into a laptop. Uh, whether it's a otoscope or a stethoscope or the camera, we buy them, we integrate them in. Where we add the value is in the secure connectivity going back to the, going back to the doctors and knowing where to route that transaction to um, and packaging that entire system. So the doctor uh, doesn't have to worry about building it, doesn't have to worry about managing it, they just worry about they've got an encounter with a patient and they're going to focus on the medical side of it. So I, I totally buy it <clears throat> that there's a, probably a large percentage of things that could be handled this way and be a lot cheaper and, and, and easier. What's the escalation path? What happens if we're talking on the phone and they realize, you know what, we can't do this in person. I need right. someone well, to that's where it. that's why we have uh, our you know, within our doctor network a variety <laughs> of levels so that it can get passed at a real time basis from one group to another. Um, you know, our our target is to work with large. Uh, large doctor network. So, for example, the group that we're working with here in Texas, uh, they're in 18 major hospitals, including the four Methodist hospitals here in here in San Antonio. Now, typically, what we envision is that is that if something needs to get to a specialist level, the food the food chain is going to stop basically at the ER doctor in a real time environment, and then if it requires a specialist, there would have to typically be an appointment and a follow up, uh, depending upon you know the time of day and what's available in that network. So you can't really guarantee that the specialist is always available in a real-time basis, but part of the system is to set up the, and schedule in a rural area where on Tuesday from 2 to 4, it's going to be an ENT at the other end of that, of that kiosk. So part of that, you can get all the way to the specialist level, but to provide something that's in a real-time, right-now basis, there is some limitations and it requires a scheduling. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay.